Violence and technical glitches have affected polling as Nigerians turned out en masse to vote in what is expected to be one of the tightest presidential races in their history between incumbent Good Luck Jonathan and former military ruler Muhammad Abuari. Violence affected areas in the country's rest of northeast on Saturday, with the Associated Press News Agency reporting that at least 39 people were killed by suspected Boko Haram fighters. The news agency cited residents of the town of Myringa as saying that members of the armed group torched people's homes early on Saturday and then shot them as they tried to escape. Twenty-five people were reportedly killed. Witnesses and officials also told AP that another 14 people, including GOM state legislator Umaru Ali, died later in attacks on the towns of Biri and Duku. Analysts are calling the poll a pivotal historical event for the young democracy. Jonathan's People's Democratic Party, PDP, has ruled Africa's most populous nation virtually unopposed for 16 years. But it is possible he could lose to Buari, who has contested three previous elections but never come close to victory before. Most Nigerians expect a tight race. Insiders on both sides say that they are confident of victory, and a January poll by Afrobarometer put the parties neck and neck with 42% of the vote each. Buhari's opposition coalition, the All Progressives Congress, APC, has quickly gained popularity by presenting itself as the face of change for voters who have grown frustrated by the government's record on corruption and its inability to defeat a dogged insurgency waged by the Boko Haram group. Police said on Saturday that two car bombs exploded at two polling stations in south-central Anugu state but did not hurt voters. Police detonated two other car bombs at a primary school in Anugu. A Nugu State Police Commissioner Dan Bacha said. Fighters from Boko Haram, who were the cause of a six-week delay to the poll, waved guns and forced voters to abandon polling stations in three villages of northeast Gom State, witnesses told AP. But, despite the reported violence, voting across the huge nation was largely peaceful and good-natured into the early evening. The official website of the Independent National Electoral Commission was hacked but was quickly secured said officials who said the site holds no sensitive material. Struck by Nigerian Cyber Army Was the message left at www.incnigeria.com Technical problems also plagued a new system for reading voting cards with biometric card reading machines, prompting the Electoral Commission to promise an extra day of voting for some polling stations. Even the president was affected. Three newly imported card readers failed to recognize the fingerprints of Jonathan and his wife. He returned two hours later and was accredited without the machine using visual identification. Biometric cards are being used for the first time to discourage the kind of fraud that has marred previous votes. Afterward, Jonathan wiped sweat from his brow and urged people to be patient as he had, telling Channels TV, I appeal to all Nigerians to be patient no matter the pains it takes as long as if, as a nation, we can conduct free and fair elections that the whole world will accept. Jonathan cast his ballot later in the day. Many frustrated voters told Al Jazeera of problems with the machines. We have had 100% failure reading fingerprints, Kofar Fada, an INEC worker in the rural Reno local government area of Kano, a state in Nigeria's predominantly Muslim north, said. Outside the door. Increasingly frustrated women jostled for their place at the front of the queue. I have been here since 8, Zainab Sabo said, as she waited among them in the heat. I'm tired and I'm hungry. Profiles, who are good luck Jonathan and Muhammad Abuari. But many others at polling stations across the country took the delays and technical problems in good spirits, one line of voters even bursting into song as they waited to cast their ballots. I am ready to cast my vote at whatever cost, said Tandalami Balamai, who fled the town of Gwoza, recently taken back from Boko Haram by the military, to a camp in Maiduguri. Electoral officials stressed that once voting starts it will not end until the last person in line has voted, even if it takes all night.